Atomic Orbital Hybridization In this video, we will discuss how the hybridization model explains bonding and geometries in valence bond theory. This will include naming the hybrid orbitals, as well as discussing what are left over after hybridization occurs. First, let's remind ourselves of some context and compare and contrast our two models for bonding. In MO diagrams, which are not in this video, we combined atomic orbitals from different atoms to form new molecular orbitals, which then created our bonding and antibonding orbitals. If you need a refresher on this, I'll add a link into the end of the video. What we'll talk about here in this video is a bit different. Here, atoms retain their own orbitals, but they are now hybridized into new orbitals, which allow the geometries that we learned about in VSEPR. I'll link that video as well. These atomic orbitals from different atoms then overlap to form our bonds. So let's get started. Valence orbitals are combined to form new hybrid orbitals. These new hybrid orbitals are named by listing the orbitals which were hybridized in order to create them. So an s orbital combined with a p orbital would be an sp orbital. An s orbital combined with two sp, an s orbital combined with two p orbitals would be sp2. An s and three p's, sp3. An s, three p's, and a d, sp3d. An s, three p's, and two d's, sp3d2. Notice that the numbers are superscripted. That's important. The new orbitals will be able to give us the Vesper geometries that we've already talked about. The p orbitals, which are not hybridized, still exist, and those are often used for pi bonding. We are going to look at each of these hybridization types in two ways. The first will be using electron energy diagrams. And think back to when we drew these and did electron configurations. This is one way of showing you how the orbitals combine. And I'll include a link to that video as well. We will also look at it in picture format so you can visually understand the combination. Let's start with sp hybridization. This happens if you need two hybrid orbitals. If you need two orbitals, you'll start with two orbitals. So you'll have an s orbital and a p orbital. Combine these together and you'll get new sp orbitals. Notice these are in between the energy of an s and a p orbital. Also notice that the two p orbitals that we didn't use sit there unchanged, and those can be used for other things. Also note the name. It is sp, written and said with no spaces. Don't put sub superscripts on them either. Superscripts are only used if the number is bigger than one. So things to notice. We combine two orbitals, we get two new orbitals. We combine an s and a p to get sp orbitals. sp is the name of the orbital, just like s and p were. Energy of the sp orbital is between that of the s and the p orbital. Now let's look at it in picture format. This helps to look at it visually if you're more of a visual learner. We take the s orbital and one of the p orbitals, and we use these to make two new sp orbitals. Notice the pink and the green p orbitals aren't used, and so those will simply continue to exist as normal. These might be empty or they might play a, play a role in pi bonding, just depending on the molecule. You can also see the geometries that these form allow for the two bonds to occur, occur at 180 degrees from each other. This gives us our linear geometry that we learned about in the VSEPR videos. We can do the same thing if we need three hybrid orbitals, except now we'll take an S and two valence P orbitals. This means we are combining three orbitals to form three new orbitals. And notice once again that these are in between the initial energy levels and the leftover P orbital is still there. So we have very similar things to notice here. Combine three orbitals, get three new orbitals. Combine an S and two Ps, get sp2 orbitals. sp2 is the name of each orbital, just like s and p were before. The energy of the sp2 orbital is between that of the s and the p orbitals. And it's also not on this picture, but note it's also higher than an sp orbital. Now let's look at the visual form of sp2 hybridization. We can see that two of the p orbitals are now hybridized with our s orbital, leaving us with the pink p orbital left over. 
These three hybrid orbitals can then form a trigonal planar geometry as shown here. So this gives us that VSEPR geometry. Next logical step, sp3. This is for if we need four hybrid orbitals, then we would combine an s and the valence p orbitals, all three of them, together to get the four new sp3 orbitals. These are again in between, in between the level of the s and the p orbitals in terms of energy. Now there are no p orbitals left over though since they've all been hybridized. The name of this is sp3 and there are four of them. This gets a bit tricky to see the geometry if you show both lobes for all four. And so even though each of these do have two lobes, just like in the other examples, we typically represent them by just showing one lobe of each hybrid orbital. So this is how these are generally represented, even though they are doubly, double lobed. You can see all the orbitals combined and you get this tetrahedral geometry shape. And so this tetrahedral geometry is where our tetrahedral geometry comes from. We can do the same thing up to 2D orbitals, which is how we get our trigonal bipyramidal and our octahedral geometries. I'm not gonna walk through these in intense detail just for brevity um, and attention span issues, but you can see how this would expand to the D and D2. Now with all that description behind us, finding the hybridization of an atom is actually a lot simpler than all those pictures. Typically where people go wrong is by skipping or incorrectly drawing the Lewis structure. Um, so be sure if you need more practice on Lewis structures that you go back and practice more of those. Practice, 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 and more practice is how you learn Lewis structures. Then, once you have the Lewis structure, you'll determine the steric number. You do this by counting the number of bonded atoms and lone pairs. It doesn't matter if it's a single or a double bond. It still counts as one when we're talking about steric numbers. And the lone pair of electrons also counts as one. Even though it's a pair, it just gets one spot, and so it counts as one. This is the same as how we did steric number when we talked about VS VSEPR. From here, we'll know that we need the number of hybrid orbitals that is equal to our steric number, which means that's how many orbitals we need to start with. So if the atom has a steric number of three, then you need a 1s and 2p orbitals, which will give you three sp2 orbitals. If an atom has a steric number of five, then you would need an s, three p's, and one d. So an s, three p's, which is four, and one d, which is five, giving us a hybridization, hybridization of sp3d. Note, you do not include the one after the d orbital, right? It's sp3d. And also it must be in this order. You cannot switch the order of the letters in this case. Take a moment and try to determine the hybridization of each central element in this picture, and then we'll go over them together. Let's first talk about the N2. There's only one bonded, bonded atom in each case, right? So the nitrogen's only bonded to one thing, the other nitrogen's only bonded to one thing. There's no reason this needs hybridization. If something is only bonded to one thing, you can just say unhybridized and you're done. That was a little bit of a trick question. Next up, we have AlH3. It has a steric number of three. We're just talking about the central element. We're just talking about the Al. The hybrid orbitals are needed is therefore three. This means that the hybridization is sp2 because you have one s, two p's, that equals three orbitals, sp2. Now let's do NH3. NH3 has three bonded atoms and one lone pair. And so that's a steric number of four, one from the lone pair and one from each hydrogen. This means that the hybrid orbitals needed is four. So we can start counting up from S. S gives us one, so we need three P orbitals, which gives us SP3 hybridized. For the next one, even though there's five bonds, remember a double and a triple bond still only get one spot. The other bond is, um, is, is not involved with the hybridization. So since each one only counts as one, each bonded atom, atom only counts as one, the steric number is four. This means that we need four hybrid orbitals, and so we get sp3. Let's do some more examples. Try these on your own and come back when you're ready, and then we'll do them together. Let's start with the first one. 
So here we have two lone pairs and four bonded atoms, which gives us a steric number of six. This means that we need six hybrid orbitals and gives us a hybridization of sp3 d2. sp3 d2. So we get one s, three p's, and two d's, and that gives us our octahedral geometry. For the next one, we have brf5. So we have five bonded atoms. We have one lone pair. This gives us a steric number of six. Total hybrid orbitals needed is six. So we end up with the same thing, sp3d2. And that's also an octahedral electron geometry. And I should have said that with the first one too. It's an electron geometry of octahedral. Of course, as, an, as a molecular geometry, it'd be a bit different. Let's do one more. Here we have SF6. Again, steric number of six. So even though there's no lone pairs, now we have six bonded at atoms. And so our hybrid orbitals needed is six. This leaves us with sp3d2. And so here you can see three examples where in all cases we had sp3d2, even though their geometries are quite a bit different in terms of molecular geometry. So they all have an octahedral electron geometry. They all have a steric number of six, and that's what gives the hybridization. In this video, we've covered how hybrid orbitals are made and how their naming comes directly from this. We've talked about how to find hybridization of a central atom and to know which orbitals are left over from each type of hybridization. We've talked in passing throughout the video about how VSEPR and hybridization is related. Spend some time making sure to think about these connections. Perhaps go back and work on VSEPR geometries now, considering how much they match hybridization that you can identify. And I'll add links to all the prerequisite materials, both in the comments in the video links and in the canvas space.